Hi, my name is Leo Jadnovsky, and I'm a Principal Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services. I'm going to talk to you today about how to deploy your code on AWS. So there are several options to do that, but first let's take a look at the proposed uh, architecture here. So we've got a web application, uh, and it's, the code for it is going to be stored in S3 or Git. We've got a load balancer, so internet traffic is going to hit the load balancer, which is going to be an ELB, and then we've got an auto scaling group behind the load balancer. So the auto scaling group is going to have anywhere from one to you know say a hundred instances depending on load, um, and then there's going to be a multi z RDS uh, database behind the uh, EC2 instances. So uh, that can be Oracle, Postgres, uh, Aurora, MySQL, or SQL Server. It doesn't really matter in this example. So. How do we actually deploy our code you know, onto these instances here? Well, there's three options. The first option is Elastic Beanstalk. So AWS Elastic Beanstalk will allow you to actually not only just deploy code, but provision all of this infrastructure. So it's going to set up your ELB, it's going to set up your auto scaling group with your EC2 instances, and it's going to set up your multi-AZ RDS instance. Now, uh, Elastic Beanstalk supports several containers, among which are Ruby, PHP, Python, Node.js, uh, .NET, Docker containers, and several others. So assuming that your code fits into one of those containers, Elastic Beanstalk is a really good fit. It's also a very simple service to use. So if you don't want to have to worry about provisioning your own uh, infrastructure here, Elastic Beanstalk will handle all the undifferentiated heavy lifting of that for you. The second option is AWS OpsWorks. So OpsWorks is great for those who are familiar with the Chef configuration management system. Um, so what OpsWorks will do is it can actually um, use Chef recipes, and those Chef recipes could be ones that you write yourself, or uh, it could be something you get from the internet, from you know existing repositories of recipes, and it's going to deploy uh, whatever the recipes tell it to. So that could be code, that could be applications, that could be dependencies for those applications. So it can be pretty flexible, and then you can you know break up your application into tiers. So let's say you have a web tier and an app tier, uh, you can deploy different uh, recipes to different uh, parts of your application. Um, lastly, uh, the third option is going to be our suite of code services. So it's going to be code commit. Code deploy. And code pipeline. So AWS code commit is our fully managed uh, Git uh, version control system. Uh, so it's fully compatible with Git. It, you can use the same Git command line uh, tools that you're typically used to. It's got a web interface as well. It's got integration with our identity and access management system. And it supports large objects, and there's no limits on the size of the repositories. Uh, so it's a great service, and it'll allow you to not have to manage your own Git repository, essentially. Uh, then there's Code Deploy. So Code Deploy is our code deployment service. And Code Deploy allows you to run an agent on your instances and also on on-premise servers, and it breaks up your deployments into different lifecycle stages. So for example, when your application starts, when your application stops, when you have to validate if the service on the instance is running, when you have to install the actual application, so on and so forth. And you can define what happens in those lifecycle uh, stages based on custom scripts. So that could be a shell script, it could be a PHP executable, it could be uh, really anything. You can you can either have code deploy handle your deploy from end to end, or you can have code deploy initiate your Puppet or Ansible or other configuration management system. Um, and so in this example, we'd have code deploy agents running on each of our instances in our auto scaling group. And they'd be basically talking to the code deploy service and waiting for uh, to initiate a deployment. And then we'd have code pipeline. 
So Code Pipeline is our continuous delivery service. And so Code Pipeline kind of puts everything together here in our scenario. So Code Pipeline is going to monitor our S3 buckets or Git repository. And as soon as there's a change deployed to it, it's going to initiate a code deploy. So it's going to tell uh, code deploy, hey, install my or deploy my new code on my EC2 instances. And how you deploy that code could be very flexible. So let's say this is a production environment and you want to be safe. And so if the deploy fails, you want to stop, you can have it deployed to one instance at a time. Uh, let's say it's a staging environment and you just want to deploy it as fast as possible. You can have it deployed to all of your instances at a time. There's also custom deployment schedules, so you can deploy based on percentage of your fleet that's healthy, or you can deploy based on number of instances that are healthy, uh, so it can be very flexible. You can also have different deployment groups. So you can have a production auto-scaling group and a staging auto-scaling group, and you can have code pipeline deploy to staging, and then that succeeds, you can have a deploy to production. Uh, so it's super flexible. These are the three options, Elastic Beanstalk, Opsworks, and uh, our code services, which are Code Commit, Code Deploy, and Code Pipeline. And if you'd like to find out more, you should go to our website, which is aws.amazon.com. Uh, and you should also check out our YouTube channel, which has all of our videos from our summits and our reInvent conferences, including several deep dives on these uh, services.